In this video, we're going to implement a very simple Lorentz simulator in NumPy. We will first go over some theory and introduce the runge kutta 4 scheme. Then we're going to implement a time stepper for the Lorentz system and create a trajectory, which we can then visualize in a three-dimensional space to reveal the classical butterfly shape. Let's get started. The channel sponsor Pasteur Labs is currently hiring SciML and software engineering positions. Check out pasteurlabs.ai slash careers for more details. Hi and welcome to this new video. The Lorentz equations are a very famous set of ordinary differential equations. Usually they are the prototypical example of so-called deterministic chaos. That means that their solution trajectory is sensitive to the initial condition. So if you integrate the Lorentz system twice with just slightly different initial conditions, the trajectories will greatly deviate from one another. But they are also well known to produce this quite intricate shape, this butterfly shape we already saw in the intro and that we're going to reproduce here. So they are a system of nonlinear ODEs. In particular, it's three ODEs that are here. And they were first described by Lorentz back in the 70s. And they arose as a simplification from his weather model to describe this interesting observation of deterministic chaos. So here is also a very interesting showcase of how to integrate these nonlinear ODEs. So in order to do this, we will combine the three variables x, y, and z into a state vector u. And then we will prescribe an initial state. So for simplicity, this will just be 1, 1, 1. So this is our initial condition. And then we want to produce a trajectory. And we do so by applying a simulator to it in that we auto-regressively unroll a trajectory. So we start from the initial condition, apply the simulator, get the next step, do it on this next step, and so on and so forth. And here for simplicity, we'll just use the explicit runge kutta 4 scheme. This is an ODE integrator with four stages. So we need to evaluate the right-hand side, which is given in terms of these system of ODEs four times, and then can advance to the next point in time. And then once we have the trajectory, so once we did this a couple of times, we can visualize it in 3D, 3D space and get our butterfly shape. And for our particular example here, we will very closely follow the original paper by Lorentz. So there are three constitutive parameters in this ODE system. It is a sigma, rho, and beta. And we will use the values here together with a time step size of 0.01. And that should match the values of his original paper from 1963. So let's get started. I already have imported NumPy and matplotlib. So then we can implement the Lorentz equation in terms of its right-hand side. So let's create a function for this and call this the Lorentz right-hand side. And this one takes the state vector u. And then as keyword arguments, which we get by placing an asterisk here, I want to hand over the sigma, rho, and beta. And then the first thing I want to do is to unpack the state vector into its three components x y and z equals u and then we can evaluate all the time derivatives individually so we will first do the right hand side for x which is according to sigma times y minus x in brackets so we will get x dot is sigma multiplied with y minus x in brackets and then we will get y dot as x times rho minus z minus y and we will get z dot as x times y sorry x times y minus beta times z and then we can again concatenate x dot y dot and z dot into an array so let's do this and call this u dot which is numpy dot array applied to x dot y dot and z dot and this u dot we can then return and this is essentially our implementation of the right hand side that i denoted here as f of u okay cool so now we have the right hand side implemented that's still not a simulator so this is going to be our next task and i want to implement this simulator in terms of an autoregressive time stepper and this shall be now a class 
which has a call signature to it. Um, you will see this in a second. So let's start by defining a class and call this the Lorenz stepper RK4. Sorry, RK4. And then this class has two methods. So we first have a constructor, so the underscore underscore in it. And we need self. And then this one shall first take the time step size. And we want to here set the default to 0 0.01. And then as keyword arguments, I want to hand over the sigma, which by default I want to set to 10. I want to hand over the row, which I want to set to 28. And the beta, which I want to set to 8 over 3. And then in the constructor, we will just save the arguments here as attributes. So we will say self.dt equals dt, self.sigma is sigma, self.row sorry, self.row is row, and self.beta equals beta. And now the heart of the RK4 stepper, it is, is call signature, so the def underscore underscore call. And whenever this, um, or this will now make the function once it is, sorry, will now make the class once it is instantiated, a function that we can then call. And we want to have it as the effect that we give it a state at one time level or one time step, and we will get the state at the next time step. So what does it take? The input should of course be self and then given u previous, and then we will return the u next. So here we get a three-dimensional array, and we will also return a three-dimensional array or precisely three-dimensional vector. For this, we need to evaluate the right-hand side of the Lorentz equation four times because we have four stages. You see this here. We have a k1, 2, and 3, and 4, which all do an evaluation of f. So let's create a closure function. I want to call this the Lorentz right-hand side fixed, and this shall be a lambda function. So lambda of u, because if you look at the right-hand side function that we do have, that is a function that depends on u, but also on the constitutive parameters as keyword arguments. And when I then want to call this four times, I don't want to type the keyword arguments every time. So I will just fix them once in a closure. So I will do Lorentz right-hand side on u, and maybe we can also go to a next line on u, and then set sigma equals self.sigma. We will set row to be self.row and we will set beta to be self.beta. And let me scroll down a bit. So this Lorentz right-hand side fixed can then be used to get the first stage in our Runge-Kutta 4 scheme. Let's call this k underscore 1. And this one is just using the Lorentz right-hand side fixed applied to u previous. Then we can use k1 to get k2 stage by applying the Lorentz right-hand side fixed on u previous plus 0 0.5 times self.dt times k1. So in other words, we will use u previous and go a little bit into the direction of k1. So if you are familiar with ODE integrators, just evaluating the right-hand side and going into that direction with the time step would be an Euler integrator. So we already go towards the next step, but just by a little bit, so only 0 0.5 here, and then evaluate the right-hand side once again. Then we get the K3 contribution by using Lorentz right-hand side fixed on U previous plus 0 0.5 times self.dt times K2. So we will now use the K2 that we got from the evaluation here to get to K3. And then we have K4, so the last stage is going to be Lorentz right-hand side fixed applied to U previous plus self.dt multiplied with K3. And then we can use all four stages to get U next, which is going to be U previous plus self.dt multiplied with K1 plus two times k2 plus two times k3 plus k4 divided by six. 
So we have now six contributions here, twice the contribution from K2 and from K3 and one contribution K1 and K4. So we take the average here and then thereby find the next state, which we can then return. And with this, we finished the implementation of our Runge-Kutta four-stepper for the Lorentz equations. Let's shift enter that. Then we can instantiate it into a Lorentz stepper by saying Lorentz stepper RK4. We just use the default settings because that's also the settings with which we want to integrate. So let's shift enter that. Then we need the initial condition. So the starting point of our integration. Let's call this U0. And as mentioned, I just want to start at once. So just a arbitrary starting point. So numpy.once of three. So we will start at a vector with three entries and all of them being one. Then we are able to unroll our trajectory. So if we now apply the Lorentz stepper to u0, we would get, oh, sorry, I think I forgot to shift enter. Yes, sorry, we need to shift enter this one, this one, this one. Okay, now it should work. Okay, so we applied the Lorentz stepper to u0 and just for completion, so u0 was a vector of ones and we got back another vector. So this is basically the next state in the trajectory of states for the Lorentz integration. But of course, just having two states is rather boring, so we cannot see much in the visualization. So we want to do a couple of and a couple of, I mean, 5,000. So we will just do a loop and append all the states to our list of states such that we can then stack them together. So let's call this a trajectory and say the trajectory shall be a list which starts at the initial condition. Then we do a temporary variable. I want to use u current for, and of course we will start our integration also obviously at the initial condition. And then we can iterate and say for i in range of 5000, I want to update my u current by calling the Lorentz stepper on u current and then use u current to append it to my list trajectory. So trg dot append u current. And now after this loop, the trajectory will be this list with 5001, to be precise, entries of a vector of three. And we can then turn this into a two dimension, a two axis array, so a matrix essentially by just calling numpy array on this. This is just more handy to work with. Here we go, that was also fairly quick. Then we can visualize this by using the three dimensional capabilities of matplotlib. So we will do figure and axis being plt.subplots. And we need to do it that way because we can prescribe a subplot keyword argument, sorry, subplot keyword. And this is needed to enable the 3D mode. So we will use a dictionary and say projection, sorry, projection is 3D. And I want to alter the fix size, figure size as well. So let's do figure size being seven by seven. Let's scroll down a bit. Within the axis that is part of the figure, we can then do a three dimensional plotting in. So we will say x dot plot. And in a two dimensional plot, you would hand over a list of values. So basically you would hand over all the x values and then all the y values. But now we will also hand over all the set values because we want to have this three dimensional line or this line that moves through the three dimensional space, which corresponds to the trajectory of the Lorentz equation. For this, let's take a look at the shape of this trajectory matrix. So trajectory dot shape. And here we see it's 5001 by three. So we have 5,001 time steps again, and each time step has three state entries. And for the three components, we now want to get the 5,001 entries. So the first argument we're gonna hand over is gonna be trajectory indexed at colon zero to get all the time snapshots related to the zero state, so X state to say, and then trj colon one and logically we're going to have trajectory 
colon two here. Then let's set the line width to 1.0. We want to have a blue curve and let's also attach the label and say this one is trajectory. To also get a feeling to where we started, I want to add a scatter point for the initial condition. So let's do x.scatter3d. And for this, we will do trj00, trj01, trj02. So to access the zero of entry here, and then respectively again for the zero state, the first state and the second state. And this one shall be in black, and we will attach the label initial point. And that's already it with the plotting. Just to get a bit more of a better representation, let's also add access labels. So let's say x dot set x label, sorry, x label, and say this is x, axis dot set y label, and say this is y, and axis dot set set label, and say this is set. And then we will just activate the legend with plt.legend. Then let's shift enter that. And of course, we set, oh yeah, this should of course not be black equals black, but color equals black. And if that works, yeah, there should be no error. And now we are also having the same curve as we saw in the intro. So we start our integration at 111. So here is zero, there's zero, there's zero as well. So this is that point here. And then we have um, usually what is called like a little bit of a transient phase where the integration starts and then we are entering this butterfly shape in the context of the um, Lorentz equations or in general with respect to nonlinear dynamics, what the what we see here actually as this butterfly shape is a strange attractor or a chaotic attractor. And once the uh, state is on this solution manifold of this chaotic attractor, um, it will stay on it. And this is also what we see here. So the path begins here and we could trace that path. But then once we enter it here, it's very hard to distinguish which of the lines is actually um, the closest in time to the trajectory on which we started. But in within this um, butterfly shape, our curve will, or like our state will jump between these um, two regions here. And that's already it with the Lorentz equation. I would encourage you to play around with the notebook if you're interested. So for instance, you could try to move the, um, the initial point here a little bit and see how it produces an qualitatively simil similar um, plot. So it will still be this butterfly shape, but the trajectory itself is different. But there's of course more to see. For instance, there's some interesting metrics or other plots to derive from this, which Lorenz also did in his work and we're going to do in one of the next videos. Also stay tuned for the uh, video thereafter. We're going to train a machine learning model to perform the integration of us for the Lorentz equation to see how well this machine learning model is able to predict the Lorentz system. But this is for another video. This channel is supported by Pasteur Labs and the Institute for Simulation Intelligence. Click the link in the video description to find out more how they merge machine learning and simulation in order to reimagine the scientific method. Also a big thanks to all my Patreons. If you also want to support my vision of free education on advanced mathematical topics, you find the link to the Patreon page down in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also let me know in the comment section how you like these new video formats with the webcam. I would be interested to hear your feedback there. Here you will now see similar videos and I hope to see you in one of the next videos.